yes, please, please, can we do the C-section? Because I've been begging for this for months. So I went into labor on my due date and I, we went into the hospital and I think this is quite common is that people get sent home if they're not dilated enough. I think that they only have a capacity for a certain number of, of um, women. So that was challenging in itself. And, and I, I was in an immense amount of pain actually from, from the get go because Leo was back to back. So his spine was kind of grinding against mine. And, and it was agony and I went and nothing really could have prepared me for that level of pain. And I thought that I was quite a tough cookie. I'm someone that at school would be like, yeah, yeah, give me a Chinese burn or, you know, and I like tire flipping and I'm, I'm quite, you know, I like to get st stuck in and I, I just wasn't anticipating it at all. And I'd written out my birth plan and I knew what I was okay with and what I wasn't but at the back of my head obviously I really wanted the c-section so I still you know I still was gunning for that then when I I was when we did go back to the hospital um I was dilated enough to stay there and unfortunately it was an evening and it wasn't a weekend and the hospital felt really dead I hate to use that word when talking about a hospital I'd always thought before because I'd had a few um, stints there on a weekend during the pregnancy. I thought we were really lucky because the car park had always been really empty. So I, I just assumed that people decided to come in for hospital appointments during the mid-working week so that they can kind of get off work. Or I don't know. I, I just thought that it was maybe going to be quieter on the weekend. And I, and I guess that's because there are less actual appointments and less consultants in the hospital. And that's not to scare people. Obviously, A&E is always, you know, well equipped and there are going to be consultants in the hospital but it just it it wasn't running at its kind of maximum capacity and I moved into a, a, a side room on the labour ward and I and I just felt really really unsupported and because it was my first birth and the only you know I'd, I'd done kind of a hypnobirthing course quite last minute when I realised that I had like resigned my fate and I wasn't going to have the C-section. I thought, okay, well, I've just got to, you know, teach myself everything there is to know about a natural birth. And I'd done the NHS NCT course, which was all online over Zoom and it was still slightly COVID-y rules. So everything was being done online. But I didn't know, you know, to shout out and say, oh, please, can I have the gas and air that's in that corner of the room? You know, I didn't know what was in the room that was an offer to me. I was already in so much pain. And I, I did see a bouncy ball and I was sort of bouncing on the ball and someone came in, um, the lady actually who had checked me in, in in a different department. And she came in after an hour or so and, and, and said, why is no one why is no one telling you what to do like and you know and then even she was helping Ryan saying can't get a get some water on this towel put it on the back of her neck like that here are some options okay here's the gas and air she might need that do you need an epidural and and she really cared and that was the difference was that it was it's kind of, you know I hate to say this but it shouldn't be luck of the draw Mm. as to who you get and as to whether they care or not. I stayed in contact with her for a while afterwards, even recovering. She would come to my house. That's how much she cared. She was a beautiful, beautiful soul, this Spanish lady called Suzanne. And she, yeah, but she had to clock off. It was the end of her shift. And it, and it was a tricky time then to be, to be in, in that position because of the changeover. And so, yeah, then I kind of endured an overnight labour experience that was really, really grim and lots of things went wrong and I was really sick and blood pressure and then sepsis and temperatures and they um they broke my waters and there was my conium in in them but nothing was escalated and it got to the point where I was actually hallucinating I was really really freaked out and just not in a good place and every time there were a couple of junior doctors who would come in to check on me overnight and I was begging for a c-section I said I just this is I'm really unwell we need to we need to please 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 can I have that and it was sort of their mission to just convince me that things were okay and just to keep going I had uh, sadly the epidural took many different people, many different attempts to try and get it in. And there's kind of a window of what's acceptable. And I, I don't quote me on it, but I think it's about 90 minutes from requesting one to receiving one. Because obviously, if you're in that level of pain and you need pain management, it's, you're not, it's undignified not to have it. <laughs> 
And that was really horrendous. And but I, and even after the epidural, I was still in an awful lot of pain. And yeah, and when I say it's kind of hallucinating, I mean anything that then Ryan or someone around me would say, I could hear it played back. It was kind of echoing around the room. So yeah, mentally and physically, I was in a horrendous state. I, d I couldn't even imagine at this point kind of getting to or visualizing what I needed to get to in terms of like being dilated and then actually having the baby. I just, I just couldn't imagine it. It wasn't as though there was this goal and we were kind of working towards it with a rational head on our shoulders. Like everything, every bit of rationality had gone out of the window. And I suppose it was only then when there was a staff changeover again on the, on the Monday morning um, when the consultant came in and and um, checked me and, you know, and I, I'm really honest, so I don't know how much I'll be really honest. And then, you know, yes, I don't I, I don't want to just petrify people, but, you know, she, she would put her she she put her whole arm inside me and tried to sort of twist the baby out manually. And it was really unpleasant and it wasn't working. So then she said, well, would, well can we do the C-section? And I honestly was just yes yes please please can we do the c-section because i've been begging for this for months thank you for watching make sure to check out the full episode of how to fail on your preferred podcast platform and also be sure to follow us on social media for the latest updates